This is a brief snapshot of the variations of the options that you have to pull a victim uh, litter away from the cliff wall or away from any outcroppings or obstructions so that you have a clean vertical ascent on what you're uh, trying to haul out for the victim. So the basic options are you can put a tender on the basket and he's going to manually uh, manipulate the victim around those objectives as he gets hauled out of the ravine or out of the canyon. The second option is you can put tension tag lines on, on the basket or on the master attachment point at the top of the basket. Tension tag lines have one inherent problem or flaw and that is that they are applying oppositional force to the haul team or to the system overall. We're big advocates of saying make sure that you're using load cells or dynamometers in those applications to make sure that you don't overload any portion of the system. A safer but more elaborate rigging option is to use tension track lines. When we use tension track lines, the basic objective is that up at the top side, we're going to apply high strength tiles. Those high strength tiles are going to be rigged, in, rigged into a high directional above the lower haul line. Those high strength tiles then have to have enough rope that they can basically come straight down the cliff face and make a right angle all the way across to a suitable anchor point where we rig in a mechanical advantage in a series. In this application, we're using a two to one in a series with an MPD. MPDs are really uh, efficient in this application because they allow us to let that two to one in a series play out and extend or also turn into a haul system and retract. You want to make sure that you can manipulate these track lines uh, by playing out slack or pulling in tension so that you can basically pull the basket away from the wall or let it ease back in towards the wall. Every time we pull tension, the track lines are going to approach more and more of a critical angle. So we only want to pull when we need to pull. The other uh, point to consider is how many track lines you're going to put in place. If the majority of the ride vertically is straight up and down, and you have a low side outcropping, something close to the ground, then you can typically get away with one track line because you're never gonna approach your critical angles. If your outcropping is much more close to the top side, like it is in this application, then when you go to pull tension on the track lines to pull the basket away from the clip wall, you are much closer to the critical application, critical angle application. So when you're faced or confronted with that obstacle at the high side, you need to consider putting multiple track lines in to accommodate the forces and load that you're going to generate on those track lines and make sure that you don't overload the system. So they're getting ready to progress through their hull now. There's the overall system. Make sure additionally that your 2-1 to one in the series has a long enough rope or a long enough system to accommodate all the play that you're gonna need. So once the track lines are established, uh, they're basically built with two different pieces. One piece of this equation is the tensioning track lines. The other piece of the equation is a standard or traditional lower haul system up top with a high directional. So envision just building a straight up and down lower haul coming right down the cliff face and the only purpose of the track lines is to pull that basket away from the cliff wall. At the master attachment point on the bridle, uh, instead of simply a belay line and a lower haul line coming into the master attachment point and then being organized on the victim in whatever fashion the organization is using, we're going to put a pulley at the top of that master attachment point, uh, which should be an appropriate pulley either a double pulley if you've closely assembled your track lines or if you have some separation in your track lines you're going to need to make sure <coughs> that you're using a not passing pulley or a Kootenai carriage. So they're they're falling on the system now. They've got a belay line rigged in, they've got their little haul line rigged in, they have redundancies to the victim basket is riding the track lines up and the track lines are controlling the proximity of the victim to the cliff wall. Additional considerations are not just keeping the victim away from the cliff wall but also keeping your lower haul line away from the rock. So we don't want rope on rock. If we can't get edge pro down over the edge to protect that rope contact with any jagged edges then the track line can also can help 
uh, control, keeping that rope away from the brick wall just as much as the brick wall. You can see back on the control side for the track lines, uh, that group has their MPD rig in, they've established the tension that they need, and they're in a good position to play out slack when need be, or apply tension when need be. We can see here they're tensioning the track line. You can see how that is rapidly approaching a more critical angle. They're pulling the Stokes basket in, or I'm sorry, out away from the cliff wall. You have good edge tenders there, coordinating communications between the track line team and the roll ball team. Here we have our main hub for our two to one in a series tensioning system for twin track lines. So what we have is an anchor strap wrapped around a bomb proof anchor coming down to a rigging plate. From here we're going to attach our two to one in a series tensioning system. So we have our main attachment here. A figure eight on a bite on the end of a rope. That end of the rope is going to run down through a pulley that is attached to one side of the track line, or one of the track lines, with a pair of prusiks. They're paired prusiks attached to the tension and track line. So the rope is going to run down through that pulley, come back up to our main hub. Once it reaches our main hub, it's going to go through a change of direction pulley right here. It's going to continue back down through another pulley attached to the second track line with paired prusiks and it's going to come back up to our main hub. Once it reaches our main hub here, the device we're going to use to tension and slack our track lines is an MPD. The MPD gives us the ability to pull tension using the two two-to-ones. Once we have the uh, desired amount of tension on the track lines, we can stop and the MPD is going to capture the progress. If we need to slack the track lines, we can operate the MPD just like you normally would using the toggle, pull it out, turn it clockwise, making sure to hold this um, tail of your rope through the friction device, giving you full control, enabling you to slap your track lines um, until they are, again, at the desired amount of tension. So that is a two to one in a series, operating in a twin track line fashion. Off-rope. On-rope. Off-rope. On-rope. Off-rope. On-rope. 
Off rope. On rope. On rope. Off rope. Safety set. Safety set. Reset. Reset. Safety set. Safety set. Reset. Safety set. Reset. So that's the basic advantage of tension track on it. Uh, you're never going to apply oppositional forces to the system per se, uh, but you do have to be very conscientious about understanding the force dynamics of track lines. Uh, make sure that you're prepared for that application. It is an advanced application or level two skill set. So dig into those formulas and theories. Uh, make sure that you stay safe when you apply these. Don't overload systems. Think smart, rescue like a minimalist, and train hard.